With Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth right around the corner, the full set is revealed and everyone's a buzz in terms of what's the next big commander card or how is this going to affect modern? But I think people are sleeping on some of the more powerful commons in the format. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about some of the more powerful cards that I think will affect the popper format, the cards that you need to look out for at your next game of comments. Now, there obviously are gonna be cards that I'm missing on this list. I'm only going over three cards. So let me know in the comment section down below, what are some of the things that I might be missing with the cards I'm talking about, maybe a significant point or two, or just what are some of the cards I'm missing in general that you think deserve the top three slot? Because hey, I'd always love a new tool to use against my opponents. But regardless, let's hop into it top three cards from Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth at number three. I wanna talk about how a card from this set might just make the red menace and the, the artifact menace honestly even worse improvised club red in one for an instant that says as an additional cost to cast this spell sacrifice an artifact or a creature improvised club deals four damage to any target let's talk about three things that are important here instant speed sacrifice an artifact or a creature and four damage to any target now this is an effect that doesn't exist in popper um at the cmc at this speed um and some of the clauses you have here this is fantastic the closest analog that we have to this is something like reckless abandon in my opinion it's one red it's sorcery speed you get to sacrifice a creature um it deals four damage to any creature or target so this this is a card that has existed in popper has seen use in popper in in the kind of go wide goblin decks unfortunately it being sorcery speed was its biggest downfall but sometimes you just want to fling spells at your face if there was a target for four damage it always is your opponent's life total so aggression is always key but when you're sacrificing something like an artifact well let's just say popper players those of you watching this video wouldn't many of you agree that uh, affinity is probably the worst archetype in the format right now it probably has been the worst archetype in the format since the existence of the format since the start of it it's not like popper affinity has had so many bannings out of the format right like it's not like the deck has been needed continuous nerfs so i think a card like this is actually really important for it think of a card like atog right sacrificing artifacts isn't that's not anything now all sarc uh, no, sarcasm sorry all sarcasm aside think about the sacrificing artifact the, the, the card does so much in terms of just being able to sacrifice artifacts to deal four damage. If you can cast it in affinity, let's be honest, you have a target because you can sacrifice your lands, right? Icar Wellspring is a fantastic example of that off the rip. Enters the battlefield, draw a card, fling it uh, with this card, deal four damage, draw a card at two mana. Come on, fantastic value right there out of cards that already exist. Like I said, if you can cast it, you can sacrifice your own lands. It's just a great top deck in general now i'm not saying this is a four of in affinity and it actually might be not in the traditional grixis affinity right now there might actually be a more aggressive version of affinity uh, that exists that will take advantage of a card like this and heck it might just go into the mono red decks because all of them are playing some type of artifact package anyway so just flinging and sacrificing something like an anchor wellspring or something like that Flinging out your opponent's face for four damage is absolutely insane. It's going to give a boost to affinity. It's going to be give a boost to red as if red and artifacts wasn't powerful enough in the format. This is going to do something big. So watch out for your life totals. Next up at number two, I wanted to talk about a card like Mirkwood Bats. Now, a lot of people would argue that this is actually the number one card that will see the most play in the format. And honestly, I could see that as well. The problem is I'm not much of a brewer myself. I don't have the creativity to understand where this would go. But reading the card first before I go too far, black and three Mirkwood bats is a creature bat with flying. It's a two, three. And it says whenever you create or sacrifice, create or sacrifice a token, not one or more, a token, each opponent loses one life. So the one or more matters because if you create multiple tokens in one go, it will trigger for each one of those ones that you create. If you sacrifice multiple tokens in a row, it will trigger for each one of those that you sacrifice. And that's what's important. And obviously there are some very good token creators in the popper format. And I wanna go over them, but there also are some ones that have come out that are creating food tokens from the Lord of the Rings set. So I think this has the potential to actually create a whole archetype around it, but I also think it has the ability to just value slot in to some of the Orzhov decks, some of the model black decks, excuse me, whatever it might be. 
So looking at the cards, we have something like Colony Garden. So if you had some type of uh, green black sack deck, some green black mid range deck, your lands entering the battlefield give you uh, give you zero one uh, plant tokens dealing one damage to your opponent. Then you have something like Nest Invader, which has existed in the kind of mono green mid range decks, the aggressive style of decks. So coming down, you know, sometimes you're going to be able to sack this with other effects, but just adding mana imagine adding mana dealing damage to your opponent fantastic value there and then you just get more spicy with something like blood fountain you enter the battlefield you create a token the blood fountain you can then uh, kind of discard and sacrifice so the whole fountain itself is going to create two damage worth of abilities and then just on top of that if we're just going to go down the artifact line think of one of the most unplayed cards am i talking am i right one of the most underplayed cards in the popper format sarcasm aside deadly dispute sacrifice an artifact or a creature you could sacrifice a blood token draw two cards and create a treasure you then create another treasure you were and then you will sack the treasure to cast another spell like the amount of low-key uh just tokens in general that you create in the format is absolutely insane creating that incremental value the the creature is going to come out deal some amount of damage in the air it's going to create that incremental value and that's what you want it's a board based game uh, it's a game of value when you're sitting across from your opponent in popper and just getting that value out of tokens is fantastic i mean at number one we're done talking about the tokens i'm going to go right into it the best card that i think will affect the popper format the most the one that will make the greatest hit in my opinion is birthday escape one blue for a sorcery draw a card the ring tempts you now the card itself is very unassuming it's one blue for sorcery speed draw card at its baseline that's what it is it's not instant speed a lot of people are thinking about this for the mono blue fairies deck but not being instant speed is a thing that's holding it back but it's a reason that balances it if it was instant speed this would not be a common the ring tempts you is why this is important being so cheap and the ability to buff up a creature based format is absolutely massive so let's take it from the top the only way we can understand the true value of this card is understanding what happens when the ring tempts you so looking at the rules itself i've gone over this in a previous video by the way so you know if you wanted to take a look check back early in the channel a couple of videos ago but going over the abilities of the ring the ring bearer um the first ability when the ring tempts you it can tempt you a total of four times you create a uh, a kind of uninteractable emblem that you get from the kind of commander format but the emblem itself will gain each of these video uh, abilities collectively it will not replace the previous ability so every time the ring tempts you it will gain this ability but it will only gain it once so you can tempt the ring four times after that every time the ring tempts you it doesn't gain another ability it will just go on another creature if you want it to so it's great you have some options to then put it on a different creatures for them to be the ring bearer when they're the ring bearer a bearer they can be a, if it's a legendary creature um it oh, sorry if it's not a legendary creature or if it is it becomes legendary and it can't be blocked by creatures with greater power fantastic so if you have some low to the ground beaters and you need to get some damage in fantastic and that's going to matter for the last ability whenever whenever the ring bearer attacks draw a card and discard a card it's not like drawing cards is bad in the format, right? There are plenty of abilities like the Monarch, like the Initiative that are already giving you background value. So having that ability on this is fantastic too. When the Ring Bearer becomes blocked, so let's say there's a creature with lower toughness that manages to block it, that creature, this controller then sacrifice it it at the end of combat so it's a little bit of removal as well for something like a jump blocker if it's not already destroying that so against the walls deck right so if you're attacking in with a big gurmag angler which we'll talk about in a second and your opponent blocks with a big wall well that wall is going to be sacrificed at end step even if the gurmag angler does not go through and when it does go through when it deals combat damage to a player each opponent loses three life so there's a lot of things to love it hyper drives your uh kind of creatures in the proper format and every time the ring tempts you you have the ability to move it on another creature maybe your opponent made one of your creatures worse provided some minus one minus one counters well just bang it onto another one right fantastic and there's so many other cards coming out of tales of middle earth that provide this ability not only does birthday escape do this in blue for one you're drawing a card and then the ring tempts you tempts you so you draw a card and maybe draw a counter spell attacking with your creature protected that way come on it's a no-brainer let's talk about some of the interactions that comes out with the ring tempted you and being a ring bearer first and foremost target creature becomes legendary one of the best if not the best removal spell in the game in the popper format other than maybe lightning bolt and some other options target destroy target non-legendary creature 
this is what there are no common legendaries but thanks to the ring tempting you you will then be able to make your creature legendary you will then be able to provide protection against one of the truest forms of removal in the format one of the best forms of removal that the black color pie has access to in a format of comments now specifically if you attach the ring tempting you onto a card like Gurmag angler it becomes absolutely insane right now obviously there's going to be a lot of things chump blocking it but again you're going to have that little bit of removal protecting your Gurmag anglers from this there's nothing else that's going to really be able to destroy it think about that um think about that card that we were talking about in number three dealing four damage that's not enough damage to kill this and then the Gurmag Angler comes in. If it goes through, it deals three damage. So it's kind of swinging for eight. It's going to draw a card, discard a card, providing fodder for future Gurmag Anglers. Just complete, complete, complete synergy. The Ring Tempting You is just going to go down as one of the top just things to build around in the format. You're already building around the Monarch. You're already building around dungeons. You're already building around the initiative. Now you can build around the Ring Tempting You along with the other ones that I'm listing there. Now, going along with it, there are other options. Now, I, I, I do wanna say that my number one is Bertie Escape, but I do also wanna highlight the ring tempting you. There are other options with it that you could play along the side this card to make it even better. It doesn't need to just be these four cards, the, the four off copy that you're playing of this, where the ring tempts you. You have other options such as Urukai Berserker, Entering the battlefield, black and two, Orkai Berserker is a 3-2 creature Orc Berserker. When Orkai Berserker enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. It's an ETB effect. Well, ETB effects are really fantastic with a little old card called Ephemerate. With a card like this, it enters the battlefield. You Ephemerate, you blink it again, the ring tempts you twice. Now, and then on your next turn, the ring's going to tempt you again. You flicker it again. You're already on the third mode by the time it gets back to your turn absolutely crazy you're already drawing and discarding you're already making your opponent's blocks weird you're already getting in that legendary ability you know removing itself from cast downs uh kind of gaze ephemerate is absolutely insane with an option like that so you're already seeing some demir options now what about a card like bombadil's song now this this one's a little less so but i still do want to highlight it as an option because the ring does tempt you with it target creature in control gets plus one plus one gains hexproof until the end of the turn now you might see where i'm going with this it's a form of protection it's a buff it targets a creature um and really what i'm looking for and this especially in creature based strategies i'm looking at something like infect now i'm not saying that this card is going to bring back infect but in fact players will definitely try it especially as a kind of long-term option drawing a card discarding a card discarding your lands drawing your spells and then also dealing damage as an alternative it's a great way to actually just get in unblocked uh, damage if you can make it that way and if you're not winning through infect damage maybe you just win in through damage with the three damage per swing so that's an option there but ultimately these are the cards that i think will have the greatest effect in the popper format and as i mentioned there are cards that i miss so please let me know in the comment section if and what those cards are that I miss. And if there are any interactions that I'm missing with these cards, because these are the ones that I'm focusing on. Please let me know if I'm forgetting any specific interaction before I throw these into decks and I misplay with them. Now, let me know what you think. And I hope you have fun drafting these cards, opening packs. And I hope for everyone watching this video, you have an equal chance of opening that one ring. We all do, but I hope my viewers specifically get a better chance than all. Enjoy it and enjoy planeswalking Middle Earth.